Chapter 2, Learning Objective 4, Record Transactions in a General Journal and Post in a General Ledger. The General Journal is used to chronologically record a business's debit and credit transactions and is often referred to as the Book of Original Entry. Journalizing is the process of recording financial transactions in the journal, and a journal entry is the resulting debit and credit entry recorded in the journal. The general ledger, or GL, is a record that contains all of the business's accounts and is sometimes referred to as the final book of entry. Posting is a process of transferring amounts from the journal to the matching ledger accounts. Here's the most common approach to recording transactions into the general journal. Even though virtually all entries are recorded via computer these days, the data entry approach mimics the way it's done on paper. The year is recorded at the top and the month is entered in the first line of page 1. The day of each transaction is always recorded in the second column. The name of the account to be debited is entered in the description column on the first line. By convention, accounts to be debited are usually recorded before accounts that are credited. The column titled F for folio simply indicates the number given to the account in the general ledger. The amount of the debits recorded in the debit column and a dash is often used by accountants in place of zero cents. The name of the account to be credited is always on the second line of the description column and is indented or shifted over to the right. Accounts to be credited are always indented in this way in the journal. The amount of the credit is recorded in the credit column. Note, it's not that creating a journal entry where the credit first is wrong, but to accountants it just doesn't look right. An explanation of the transaction is entered in the description column on the next line and generally is not indented. And then a line is usually skipped after each journal entry to separate the individual entries and the date of the next entry recorded. Here are all the entries for Big Dog that we just did using T accounts. We can see the debit to cash and credit to share capital in the first transaction for $10,000 and a description. The cash account is numbered as 101, share capital 301. Now I encourage you to stop the video so you can study how each transaction is formatted and entered into the journal before moving on. Here are the rest of the entries, including this compound entry for the various expenses. Note that all debits are listed first here, then the two credits. A compound entry is simply one that has more than one debit or credit. Also notice something interesting here. If I insert a big T into the general journal, this will also show us where our amount will go into the T account or the ledger for each account. Now let's talk about posting or transferring the numbers in the journal transactions to the ledger. Ledger accounts are simply a formal variation or representation of T accounts. Debits and credits recorded in the journal are posted to the appropriate ledger account so that the details and balance for each account can be easily determined or found. The ledger accounts shown here are similar to what's used in electronic or digital accounting programs today. The date and amount are posted to the appropriate ledger account. The journal page number is recorded in the folio column of each ledger account as a cross-reference. The appropriate ledger account is recorded in the folio column of the journal to indicate the posting has been made to that particular account. After posting the entry, a balance is calculated in the balance column. A notation is recorded in the column to the left of the balance, indicating whether or not the balance is a debit or credit. A brief description can be entered in the description column, but it's not necessary since the journal includes a detailed description for each entry. As you can appreciate, this manual process of recording, posting, summarizing, and preparing financial statements is a bit cumbersome and time-consuming, and in virtually all businesses, the use of accounting software automates much or all of this process. Still, it's important for you to have a basic understanding of how economic events like purchases or sales are turned into accounting transactions and make their way into the books. In this and subsequent chapters, either the T account or ledger account can be used in working through exercises and problems. Both formats are used to explain and illustrate concepts in subsequent chapters. In addition to the general journal, there are also special journals that are created to record and track certain types of high-frequency transactions such as sales on account, purchases on credit, or transaction involving cash receipts or disbursements. These would be entered into the sales journal, purchases journal, cash receipts, and cash disbursements journal respectively. In days past, these used to be separate books or journals or diaries. Here's an example of a sales journal that shows how sales to a customer might be recorded. For example, on September 1st, there's a sale to Hardy for $25,000 on account for hardware sales, plumbing sales, and GST. 
We could also have subgroupings by product sold, by customer, by GST from customer, and can also include cost of goods sold and credit sales, returns and allowances, which is covered in later chapters. Monthly totals are posted to the general ledger to these GL account numbers. Here's an example of a purchases journal where on September 5th, the purchase for $160,000 was made from Northward suppliers for hardware purchases of $152,000 plus GST of $8,000. We can also include credit purchase returns and allowances, which are also covered in later chapters. Again, monthly totals are posted to the general ledger. Here's an example of a cash receipts journal, where on September 11th, the company collected $20,000 from Douglas, which was for sales made on account. On September 12th, there's a cash sale for $3,200, broken into $3,088 in sales, plus GST of $163. The cash receipts journal can also include sales discounts from customers because these are applied when cash payments are received from customers for amounts owing. As with the other journals, monthly totals are posted to the GL. And finally, here's an example of the cash disbursements journal where the company paid $1,600 in salary to John Bremner on September 2nd and property taxes to the city of Edmonton on September 14th. The disbursements journal can also include purchase discounts from suppliers because these are applied when the company pays amounts owing to suppliers. And once again, monthly totals are posted to the GL. The general journal continues to be used to record any transactions not recorded in special journals, such as correcting entries, adjusting and closing entries. Here are a couple examples of entries commonly made to the general journal for bank service charges and depreciation expense. In addition to special journals, Subledgers are created when there are many transactions for a certain GL account that require subgroupings to be kept, such as accounts receivable by customer, accounts payable by creditor, inventory by item. Think of a subledger as a spreadsheet that keeps track of information that isn't in the form of debits and credits. Each subledger would be made up of individual records that would be summed up to equal the total ending balance in the corresponding ledger account. For example, an accounts receivable subledger would be made up of a separate record for each customer, which would record and track the details for each billing and payment on account. The sum of all the records would equal the account's receivable balance at any point in time. Here we can see the details of our customers and what would be the AR subledger, where each customer gets their own page. See here that Hardy started the month with a balance owing of $4,000, and there were two sales during the month on the 1st and 8th for $25,000, and 115,000 resulting in a running total of $144,000. Basically, the documents we see on a daily basis, such as customer billings, invoices to suppliers, cash receipts, etc., are the source for transactions entered into the special journals, which are then supported with totals and information in the subledgers.